In Creo Parametric, you can create family tables at the assembly level to represent different configurations of your products. Here I have an assembly for an air-cooled brake, and I want to make different variations of this. If you take a look in the model tree, I have a part that has generic in the name. If I try to open this from the mini toolbar, I'll get the select instance dialog box that shows you that this particular part has five different variations. I'm going to cancel out of here and select the component, then use model display component display style to go to a transparent style. The different variations have different numbers of flutes or fins in the brake. Also, I have a, another part, the mount, which has a family table. If I right click and open, you can see that there are three instances in here. And the instances have different numbers of mounting holes. And the ones with fewer holes also have a shorter height. To create my family table at the assembly level, I'll click on the family table command from the model tab. And here I have the dialog box, and I like this dialog box because if I don't have a family table, it tells me how to create one. I'm going to click on the Add Columns icon to specify what I want to vary, and then I'm going to click on the Add Instances icon to create my different rows for my variations. Let's click Add Columns, and I get a dialog box with the nine different objects that I can select. These are the same choices that you have at the part level, except you also have the choice of component. And component is what you're probably going to vary the most in an assembly level family table. I can choose the radio button for component and then pick a component either out of the graphics area or the model tree. And in this case, I pick the two components that have family tables. I can also select this mandrel component to have it in here, and I'll have some variations that will include it and will not. You can also choose different parameters. Here we have dimensions. Be aware that these dimensions are for assembly level dimensions, like offset dimensions for your assembly constraints. You cannot control part level dimensions at the assembly level. For features, you can include any assembly level features. For example, here I have an index hole that will appear in some of the instances and some will appear in others, will or won't appear. All right, so there I have the four different columns that I want. Now I will click the OK button, and here I have the dialog box, and all the columns have a Y indicating that the generic has those different components and the assembly level feature. To create my different variations, I'm going to click on the Add Row icon. Let's make six different instances in here. And now I can start editing my different instances that I want to create. If I click in one of these cells that contains an asterisk, from the drop-down list, I can choose Yes if I explicitly want that component to appear, and for No, I don't want the component to appear, or asterisk to have the same value as the generic. But this column is for components that contain a family table. I can enter in the name of one of my instances to use that particular instance in the family table. So let me type in, this is the underscore 08 instance that I want to use. And then I can do the same thing for the other one that has a family table. Type in the name of the instance, which I happen to write down in advance. And then for the other component, I could say, no, I don't want to have the mandrel. And no, I do not want to have that assembly level feature. And then I can go about filling out my table for the rest of the instances. And I'll come back when I've done that. All right, now I have my table filled out. I've got the different names of my instances. I've specified which instances from the family table generics I want. And I've entered in yeses and nos for the mandrel component and the assembly level features. Now let's try to verify the instances. I'll click on the verify icon and then choose verify. And now in the background, Creo Parametric is trying to generate each one of the individual instances.
Now that it's finished, I will click on the close button. If I want to see what one of these instances looks like, I can select it from the list and then use the eyeglasses and it'll show me a preview in a little window. There we go. Let me close the small preview window. And if I want to open it up in its own separate window, I can click on it, then choose the open command. And here we have it. Let me select this component and once again use component display style to make it transparent. You can see that this one has fewer fins on the inside compared to the generic. Let's go back to the generic again and go to the family table. And if I want to take a look at a different instance, let's choose this particular one and then open it up in its own separate window. Here we can see that we only have four holes on the top here. If I select it and then choose component display style transparent, we have a lot more fins than the previous one. Now that I have a family table, I can go to an assembly that contains this and find where the generic is located in the model tree. And then I can right mouse click and hold and choose replace and family tables automatically selected. I can click the open button and now I can see the different instances that I have created in here. And I can say, hey, I wanna have the one that is going to have the eight fins and fewer mounting holes and also a shorter height. I'll click the OK button and then OK. And you might have noticed how the component got shorter. And so in that way, you can create an assembly family table and then use it to replace different instances in a higher level assembly. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.